Well, a big shazam to you people. You're not ready. You might be close, but you are not ready. A week away from the election, we have potential fire and brimstone raining down upon our society and our own ears and household. You're not ready for it. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it and push back on you. Some of you are close, but even the best of us are not ready for what could be coming. Stay with me. I have five things you can do over the next week to hopefully help you get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Should be fun. Should be a conversation. Let's talk about it. Buckle up. Here we go. Today's episode is brought to you by TacPack.com. Every month, they bring awesomeness to your door. Everyday carry, survival, and rudely tootly parts to your door. It's a lot of fun. It really is, but you get a lot of good stuff. They got the regular box and the plus box. Huge news. In November, the plus box, that's the big one, is going to be the highest value ever and the highest value single item in TacPack plus box history. Get yourself subscribed right down below. Use code Johnny60, and you're going to get a $60 EDC grab bag that I think will ship ship separately from your monthly box. But here's the news. you got to order while it's still October. TacPack.com is right down below. Get yourself subscribed. I got through it. I fumbled my words there a little bit. You people, thanks for every thumbs up. Appreciate y'all. Y'all are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I like talking about being prepared. I am not a prepper, Uh, though I think people that are not prepared think that I am. There are some major flaws in the prepping community. I just think we just need to be prepared. When you say I'm going to be a prepper, you go down the pathway of eventually wearing cargo pants and or growing out a big gray beard and hoarding rice and beans in your garage. And I find some serious problems with that. Here is something I have never told y'all. Check this out. Not that long ago, I get, a, I get a call from a guy in Manhattan, and he says, hey, I am the producer of the Dr. Phil show, and he wanted me to come on the show and talk about prepping. He said, when? He said, day after tomorrow. You're going to fly to Manhattan tomorrow, and we're going we're gonna to sit you up. It's going to be fun. You're going to do blah, 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 blah. And they wanted me to come on and be the Dr. Phil show uh, anti-prepper. A lot of y'all went, Johnny, you should have done that. A a myriad of reasons why that's a terrible idea. But they asked me to come on the show. I find that hilarious. And I'd forgotten about that. The other day, somebody said, hey, why didn't you go on Dr. Phil? I said, what are you talking about? They said, the Dr. Phil thing, where they asked you to be a guest. L-O-L. But because of that, I just wanted to highlight, I've been talking about this stuff for a long, long time. We talk about it on the Liberty Lounge. A lot of y'all are close. You're pretty close. Now, if you lose everything, entire household wiped out, that was the river coming through East Tennessee and North Carolina, you're starting over. You're not ready. Nobody's ready for that. But, you know, the power shutting off for 90 days or your cell phone going out for 90 days or no water for 90 days, now we're talking about some pretty big speed bumps in the middle of winter that we need to prepare for. I have friends in town, one, one of which, Jared, he's really close. He's, he's, he's doing pretty well, pretty doggone well, in my opinion. But after this flood thing, he looked at me, we were sitting over there in the Liberty Lounge studio the other day, and he goes, dude, I'm not ready. I, he goes, I've got some holes that I'm working on. I'm like, dude, I'm not either, and I'm the preparation guy. There are things that I have prepared for at my place that would, I think, shock you. You'd be like, hells yeah, Johnny, that's not bad, not bad, not bad. And then there's other things I'm like, oh, I need to work on. And Jared and I are pretty good. We're pretty doggone good. I would say we're top 1%. And I mean, that's not a hard, that's not a, that's not a high bar to get over. Most people are just like, just buy your stuff at the grocery store. Yeah. But uh, I'm doing pretty good. Top 1, 2, 3%. Doing pretty good. Still, I have holes. I want to push back. Even if you think you're pretty doggone ready, take a look around. Look at things that you use on a regular basis that aren't part of the classic food and water and gun stuff that uh, list that need to be talked about medications contact solution for me is one of them this list i'm about to give you is a little bit prescriptive but i want to challenge you to look around in a non-prescriptive way because what works for me doesn't work for you i can't tell you what you need if you have an insulin dependent person in your household obviously you're going to need some insulin duh But just think about what you use on a bi-weekly, monthly basis. Think about that. Yeah, obviously, food, water, shelter, blah, blah, blah. We we all got that. Now, I've got five for you. 
The election's in a week. You can't do much, people. There's not much you can do. But here's five, a little bit prescriptive. The idea is to have a conversation. But here's some easy things you can do that won't break the bank. Number five, of course, just there's so many people that don't have water. Just the next time you're at the grocery store, buy a couple jugs. That may get you through two or three days. Just a little bit till you can get a boiling system going, get some tarps set up to catch rainwater. What works in your area doesn't work in mine. I have friends in California. They have water shortages all the time. They have rooms full of water. Here, East Tennessee, it rains every 37 minutes. So we're pretty good. But I want you to think about that. Get, get yourself just a little bit. This one's, I, I, that number five is obvious. Number four, this one's a little different. Double up your protein. Go to the grocery store this week. Whatever protein you normally buy, buy double, especially if it's cans or little bags of fish, bags of salmon or tuna. Buy protein. You don't have to go nuts. You don't have to spend $600,000. You don't have to break the bank. Just double it up. If you're going to buy two or three cans to make some buffalo chicken dip, buy two or three extra cans. Double up your protein every time you go to the grocery store for about six months, and you'll look at your shelves and go, wow. And that way you are buying what you actually eat and you're not buying random crap from some, some protein-selling company. There's nothing wrong with that. I may have a new sponsor on this channel that's, that's prep stuff, and I'm fine with that. But buy things that you normally buy on a regular basis. Buy your protein, other than raw. If you normally do cans of chicken, I, I love uh, cans of white chicken stacked up in case I need to make a little, uh, little chicken salad. Number three, this is going to hurt some of y'all, and some of y'all are going to look at your wife right now and go, Betsy, I told you. Never let your gas go below a half a tank. That's a really good thing that you can do over the next week. Just keep your car topped off. I've been stopping by and putting $8 in all the time. We had gas go out during the flood just for a couple days, and I didn't change a thing. And I knew it would be back, and you could run to, run to Greenville and grab some gas. There was places you could go to get gas. We had a little hiccup here for a few days. No big deal. No big deal. But I also keep my tank full. That's a super easy one for y'all. Ethel, fill that gas tank up. Number two and number one uh, may be a challenge for a lot of folks that you may not think about this. Number two, with your loved ones, talk about your communications. Cell phones don't work in the apocalypse. There's no cell phones, so make a plan. Hey, if there's ever a moment where all cell phones go out, I'll meet you back in the driveway as fast as we can. Wait for me there or wherever, wherever you need to be. I have plans with both of my kids. They're away at college. What they're supposed to do if comms go down, comms can bang, go down, and that's it. We rely on these little bastards nonstop, excuse the language, nonstop. Make a plan. Talk to your loved ones. If you're a single man like me, I'm talking to the man in the mirror. <laughs> Number one, some of y'all do this. Some of y'all don't. This is going to be big for some. Get some cash this week. Get some cash out of the darn bank. Get some cash. Get as much as you can. Nothing crazy. Just get a little extra, a little extra. Get you a little stack of cash and put it somewhere. John Lovell says there's, there's not many situations that you get in that you can't get out of with cash. Yes, sometimes you got to use the fisticuffs or the rudely tootly. But regular situations, cash sure does help. That's five for you, a little bit prescriptive. Now, I want to have a conversation. Let me know down below what, you, what your favorite one is of those or which one got you thinking or what I need to work on. I'm working on this eight days, seven, seven days, 11 hours. I want to end with this. This is how bad this freaking situation could be. I'll talk about this, I think, again tomorrow. Jared posted this today. It's from Upward News. Allegedly, Tim Walls has promised to make the AOC, make AOC the Speaker of the House. Three, that would make her the number three person, potentially president of the former freest country in the, in the world. The greatest world power this universe has ever seen. And AOC would be the number three person, two heartbeats away. You better strap up, people. You better get your cash and all that stuff. I'm not doom and gloom. I'm not skies. The sky done fell in the 60s. But plan accordingly, as you know who says. Thoughts for the day. Let me know down below. I'll see y'all again tomorrow. This gun fits my hand better than this one does. Diabetes.